Again, we are delighted to be with you as we engage in this very exciting exercise of stewardship education. We have been going outside um, the normal as it relates to stewardship education and doing some presentations in this series that have not generally been considered or traditionally been considered uh, stewardship education activities. And the next presentation would be one of them. We are talking to the stewardship of Seventh-day Adventist Christian education. We have a panel, a distinguished panel, I must say, of the directors in the Department of Education in the South Caribbean Conference. Mrs. Jessica Cunningham is the Director for Education in the South Caribbean Conference. She is uh, one of our panelists in this presentation. Our second presenter panelist is a person who has spent more than 50 years of her life in the work of Christian education. And she is Mrs. Elmer Bruce Frederick, presently serving as the assistant in the Education Department of the South Caribbean Conference with special responsibility for early childhood education. And joining us as a facilitator in this panel is the administrative professional in the Office of Education, uh, Ms. Dana Rojas Bess. And at this time, I want to hand over to her as she engages the and the Assistant Director of Education in the South Caribbean Conference. Dana, over to you. Thank you, Pastor Singh. And with us, we have the two esteemed directors, as I said. Thank you, ladies, for being here. So without further ado, let's start. Mrs. Cunningham. What is the philosophy of Seventh-day Adventist Christian education, in your opinion? Well, thank you, Madam Moderator, Ms. Bess Rojas, and good day to our viewers. We are very happy that you have joined us, and I want to uh, acknowledge my um, Associate Director, Mrs. Frederick. Um, you know, Seventh-day Adventist Christian education, all education is, if I, is guided by or based on a foundation, philosophical foundation. And Seventh-day Adventist Christian education is no different. Actually, the foundation is that we believe in God um, fully and all, and that all knowledge is actually absolute, all truth is actually absolute as espoused from God himself. Actually, it is um, demonstra our philosophy is demonstrated through the value system that we espouse, which is seen in our um, teaching learning process because we aim to aim towards holistic development of our students, that is the spiritual aspect, the physical, the socio emotional, and every single aspect or sphere of human endeavor. So actually, we, the philosophy of SDA education is Christocentric and, aims toward, and the aim is towards holistic development of our boys and girls. Thank you. Okay. What are the institutions that God has ordained to administer Christian education, Mrs. Bruce Frederick? Thank you for the question. Very interesting question. And as my director would have stated before, it's holistic development. And therefore, I dare to say that the institutions that are charged with the responsibility of administering such are the home, the school, and the church. We believe that the home is the first place of learning with the parents as the first teachers and then the children are sent out to an external institution to continue that education which began in the home and the church of course speaks to the spiritual development 
further education and strengthening of the child. So the home, the school and the church are the institutions ordained to administer Christian education. Thank you. And so in your op opinion, at what age does Christian education begin? Very interesting. Education, be it Christian or otherwise, begins in the womb of the mother. So what my child will be tomorrow is what I am today. Because I pass my values on and my child begins learning. I begin training that child from the womb. Wow. Very interesting. To what extent is the conference involved in early childhood education, in your opinion? The South Caribbean Conference is mindful of the importance of children. And therefore, education is important. To what extent they are involved, I dare to share that we do have two types of schools. We have the state assisted school and we have the purely private church run school. We also do have in between parents or members who are mindful of sharing or training children and they do so in a private capacity, albeit sometimes on the church's compound with the permission of the church. To what extent then is the conference involved? The conference allows the use of its property for the operation of schools, that is the church property. The conference is sometimes involved in the payment of workers, the salary of some of the workers of these schools. And as I said before, we have state assisted schools where the government pays the staff. So the conference shares in a partnership arrangement in the involvement in the schools. Okay, so let's shift gears a little to the primary school education. So, Mrs. Cunningham, what is happening to primary school education in the South Caribbean Conference? Well, thank you very much for that very interesting question. Um, at the, in the primary school sector of our system, we are making significant attempts at the holistic education to which we referred earlier when we were speaking about the philosophy at our seven private primary schools and five assisted primary schools. Um, we are paying great attention to the spiritual development of our, our boys and girls. We are paying significant attention to the academic or intellectual development, the physical the social, emotional, and every other aspect of human development. As a matter of fact, um, we have specific programs which we treat intentionally with the different aspects of development. For example, for the spiritual development, we have a right, wide range of um, spiritual programs religious spir spiritual programs. For the academic, we, of course, that is one of the the second major area of the school, and we pay great attention to all the best practices with regard to teaching, learning, things like, you know, um, differentiated instruction and the use of, in these pandemic times, etc., the use of educational technology. We pay attention to our mixed ability classrooms. So we pay attention to the students with special educational needs as well as to the typical students above average 
student in terms of our social, emotional. We pay attention to the student's emotional and mental health, especially in these times that has become extremely important. We pay attention to the physical and hence the emphasis on, you know, um, physical education and sports and so on. And the whole holistic um, development of the student, music and every um, area that, you know, makes up a human being or boys and girls. So that at our 12 primary schools, these are uh, areas that uh, significant attention is being, uh, being paid to. So can you share with us how many secondary schools do we have in our education system? Well, at, in South Caribbean Conference, we have three um, secondary schools and they are, the three are private actually. Um, CUC Secondary, and, which is located you know, on the compound of the university. We have a very beautiful synergy there between CUC Secondary and the University, University of the Southern Caribbean. And then we have in that, in that particular secondary school, spaces are bought by the, the state, but it's a private school. And then we move to La Romaine, South Trinidad, where we have Southern Academy of Seventh-day Adventists, um, another private Seventh-day Adventist school in which spaces are bought by the state. And then we move to Sandy Grandi, Bates Memorial High School, which is private as well, but um, parents purchase, well, parents would pay for their students to attend there. Well, of course, the same thing happens at CUC and Southern Academy, because we accept students whose parents pay for them, right? But we have the additional of the state purchasing spaces. But I must emphasize these three schools are private Seventh-day Adventist schools, and I must also emphasize that at these three schools, we uphold the Seventh-day Adventist philosophy of education. And what is the population size of our school system? Right. On average, a yearly average will be 3,005, 3,600 students on average for the system. But of course, we would have experienced uh, some decline during the 2020 when the pandemic started, well, the pandemic itself started to 2022, right? So we have an average of about 3,200 for this, you know, um, particular school year. Of course, decline would have taken, a decline would have taken place because of, um, because most of our schools are private as, you would realize we have um, seven, we have 12 primary schools, five of which are assisted. So parents would not be paying for, to send their children to these schools, but we have seven private. And as I just emphasized, the three secondary are private. So seeing that most of our schools are private, it means parents <laughs> would be paying fees. And with the pandemic, we have, we have had a lot of retrenchment, loss of work, jobs and so on and in some cases, a reduction in salary, salaries and wages. So that may be a crucial factor in the leading to the decline. But on average, it's about 3,005 to 3,006 pre-COVID. So, I'm hearing some challenges, and on that same vein, we'll ask, what are the challenges of state aid in Seventh-day Adventist Christian education. And for this question, I will be um, opening it to both Mrs. Cunningham as well as Mrs. Bruce Frederick. Yes? All right. Um, yeah, you would like me to start. Thank you. All right. Um, well, in terms of the, the challenges of the state, our state-assisted um, um, part of the system, um, actually, to my mind, it is the same challenge, some of the same challenges that our private schools will experience, um, you know, because in to, well, which will be the financial area actually. And it may seem strange um, that our state assisted schools will be experiencing any sort of financial challenge. But in truth and in fact, 
the state aid model uh, which we operate in Trinidad and Tobago allows the state to pay the salaries and other benefits and so on for our teacher principals and teachers and but do not and of course they will give some assistance with the building and, and so on and other you know um, equipment and so forth but you know education is such an expensive um, business well if I may use that too it's such an expensive enterprise that um, even though the state will be paying salaries and so on the state assisted schools still need a lot of funds additional funds in order to provide the sort of equipment and resources and so on and even um, building facilities that are required and this is why we want to encourage our churches you know to continue or even improve their contributions towards our state assisted schools and as a matter of fact the education act even says that it is the board of management the sda board of management the conference in our case that is responsible for the physical you know um outlay of the school so the lands belong to the conference the whole property belongs to the conference and we are expected to you know, do our part financially in maintaining and developing the facilities at these, at these schools. But in, in the other areas, um, it will be basically the same challenges that population, well, we may not have so much of a challenge there because students, parents are not paying. But, um, you know, some of these challenges that we would experience at the private schools, we would also experience at the assisted schools, where the major challenge will be finance. So, from what our director just said, there is um, minimal challenge, I would say, and that there is a harmonious type of relationship that exists between the state and the denominational board, in this case, the SDA Board of Management. It may interest us to know that the teachers of the state-aided schools, while they are paid by this government, their appointment may be made by the government upon the recommendation of the SDA Board of management and I think it's important for us to note that mm -hmm. because so. these schools are Adventist schools mm -hmm. and because they are Adventist schools some of the financial obligations rest on the shoulders of the SDA Board of Management mm -hmm. and as we know the churches do not have money as much as the state so there will be times when things are tight, but every effort is made to satisfy the needs. And even in the development of the plant and the repairs on the plant, etc., there is a ratio, a percentage ratio that exists where the government pays a certain percentage and the SDA Board of Management pays a certain percentage. It is therefore important for our churches to recognize and accept that these schools are our schools and be they state assisted or be they private, a financial obligation still rests with the church. Very true. Okay. It's in a spiritually charged environment. So that um, and you'll realize it's, it's, it's a network, network not only in terms of home, school, and church, but when we get to the school aspect, we are networking from the early childhood, going to the primary, secondary, and then where to after that? The University of the Southern Caribbean. Right? Who is, it's, the university is not under the South Caribbean Conference directly, but it is part of our Seventh-day Adventist education system. So we want to thank you very much for 
asking us these beautiful questions, um, some of the challenges, but we thank you very much and we want to say to our viewers, thank you for your support of Seventh-day Adventist Christian Education as we continue, as we move forward into um, the future, right, a future which seems to be somewhat of a challenging, but we as Seventh-day Adventists do not have, Seventh-day Adventist Christians do not have to worry ourselves about the challenges. We just have to continue to trust in God. He is in control and He will take care of all that He needs to take care of, including the, the boys and girls of our churches, our homes, our churches, and in our schools. So we want to thank you very much for viewing. And of course, we welcome your support as in our, all our schools and including our university. Thank you very much. Let's now invite Pastor Singh to do a special prayer for our education system. So I thank you, Sister Bess, for allowing me the privilege to uh, have this prayer this time. We want to thank the education directors for sharing with us and at this time we want to invite you our viewers to engage in a posture of prayer wherever you are as we pray for the education system the church the education directors the school boards the principals the staff the student body and the parents of our students and well-wishers shall we bow our heads for prayer father and god we come before your divine presence. Happy Lord for the privilege of prayer that we can come at this time, dear God, to present to you the education system of the Seventh-day Adventist Church and ask, dear God, for your special blessing upon this institution. We thank you, dear God, for every contributor to this system and pray that wherever they are, wherever they function, that you would pronounce your special blessing upon them. Today, Lord, we want to present to you the education directors. Uh, Mrs. Cunningham, Mrs. Frederick, we ask dear God for your divine wisdom to rest upon them. You have given them an awesome responsibility, Lord, to lead this department. And we pray, dear God, that you would make them fit for the task. But in addition, dear God, we want to pray for every other person who contributes to the success of the education department of our conference. So Lord, we present to you our school boards, persons who volunteer their time and their resources to contribute, Lord, to the advancement of the various schools that they are engaged in. We pray that you would bless every person. We ask their God that you would bless our principals. They are the ones who operate the school on a daily basis. And we just thank you, dear God, that you would pour upon them your divine wisdom as they seek to make decisions, Lord, for the advancement of the school in their various localities. We ask, dear God, for your blessings upon the staff. Our teachers, Lord, who stand before our children every day, we pray, dear God, that you would bless them. Bless them, O oh Father, with more than human wisdom that as they seek to impart to their students they would not just impart academics. They would not just pr produce students who are academically successful. But, oh God, like we discovered today, they would produce students who are well-rounded with the education of the head, the heart, and the hand. So bless our teachers, dear God. Bless the auxiliary staff, dear Lord. All the other staff members, Lord, who contribute to the smooth operation of the school. Bless each one, Father, for the contributions that they continue to make. Father, this, the, the, at this time, we present to you the student body of our schools. Mrs. Cunningham has said to us today, Lord, that we have over 3,000 students in our school system. And we just want to thank you, dear God, for them. We commit them again into your hands and pray that you'd bless them. Remind them, dear God, that from the pen of inspiration, you have instructed us that higher than the highest human thought can reach is your ideal for them. 
And so, Father, we pray that you would take every student in your hands. There are some, Lord, who are, who are on the top side of the curve. There are some, Lord, who are slow learners. We commit every student to you, dear God. There are some who are uh, good at academics, and there are some who are good at the vocational skills. We commit every student into your hands and pray, dear God, that you would bless them. Bless them, dear Father. Grant them success in all their endeavors. Oh, Father, give to each of them a dream today, Lord. Give them a dream, Father, that they might seek to accomplish all that you want them to. Remind them, dear God, that you have a special plan for their lives. Bless our students, Lord, each of them in their own special way. We ask, dear God, for a blessing upon the homes that they come from. And pray, dear God, that you would bless their parents. Bless their fathers and the mothers, dear God. Bless those, Lord, who are committed to Seventh-day Adventist Christian education. Bless them, dear Father. We ask, O oh God, for a special blessing upon our churches. Our churches that contribute not just financially, but contribute morally and otherwise to helping our students, dear God, to be in school and to receive an Adventist Christian education. Have your way, dear God. Bless our institutions from the early childhood centers, Lord, to the University of the Southern Caribbean. Bless every institution, dear God, every leader in every institution. May we who put our hands to the plow, dear God, never turn back until finally the work is done. Oh God, our goal is to prepare men and women to take their rightful places in this world, to make the world a better place. But very importantly, dear God, to prepare men and women for the kingdom of God. And so, Lord, we long for the day as we educate our boys and girls, as we contribute to the advancement of Christian education, as we spend our monies, our time, our resources, dear God, we long for the day when finally it's going to be all over and Jesus will come to take his children home. Keep us faithful, dear God. Bless every participant in the education system, O oh God. Keep us faithful, trusting and true to you until the very end. And when you come in your kingdom, dear God, grant us a place with you. May we be in that number, O oh Father. When the saints go marching into the eternal kingdom, we give you thanks and we give you praise. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. Thank you to our esteemed guests. Thank you so much. You're Directors, welcome. you have really imparted tremendous information to our listening and viewing audience. Thank You're you welcome. for being present. And thank you, Pastor Singh, for the closing prayer. That prayer, that special prayer for our education system. Thank you.